Hey guys, this is Josh here with Trillium Wild Edibles, and today I want to shoot a video for you guys that'll help you identify wild plants based upon their physical characteristics and their physical features. And in this video, we're going to be taking an in-depth and close-up look at the physical features of leaves and their growth patterns. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, and the very first thing that we're going to be talking about is the leaf shapes. Right here you can see one of the most common leaf shapes that you're probably going to run across. And whenever you're looking through identification guides on wild plants, whether it be edible or medicinal plants, you're going to notice a lot of terms that you may or may not be familiar with. So we're going to go through each one of these terms and I'm going to show you several variations of leaf shapes that correspond with those terms. Now the very first leaf shape that we're going to talk about is ovate. You can see this ovate shaped leaf here and this is very, very common amongst a lot of edible and medicinal plants. This is very common amongst plants in general. Now there are a lot of different shapes that can go along with a plant having oval or ovate shaped leaves. This is all off of the same plant and you can see how this leaf here is a little more narrow. It's a little more elongate or elliptical. And that's something else I wanted to mention is that ovate can blend the lines between lance shaped and elliptical. And here you can see this leaf here, which this leaf is more elliptical in shape. And this is all off of the same plant. So if you're looking in a field guide and you see ovate or elliptical shaped leaves and you're trying to identify this plant, you may interpret this completely different than what you read or what you see. Another good example of an ovate or oval shaped leaf is right here. You see this very, very large oval ovate shaped leaf. And there are actually three of them on this plant. Also, oval or ovate shaped leaves can blend the line between not only lance shaped or elliptical, but also egg shaped, which some people consider an egg an oval, and it kind of is. However, in some field guides, you may see certain plants' leaves described as egg shaped instead of ovate, whereas you may get there and you may think that's more oval or ovate. It just depends on personal interpretation of what you read and what you're seeing. And then here you can see another example of an oval or ovate shaped leaf. This is from plantain and as you can see this leaf doesn't have very much of a point. Whereas this leaf comes to a point. Now in a lot of plants some oval or ovate shaped leaves may come to a point. Some may be rounded at the tip. Some may be rounded at the tip like plantain. Some of them can come to a very very fine point like you see in this plant here. Alright now the next leaf shape that we're going to be talking about is elliptical. You can see this leaf shape here. Now I mentioned this in the ovate and this is on the same plant that we talked about ovate leaves. This leaf could be interpreted or construed as elliptical and it is more of an ellipse than an oval. Now another thing to note about elliptical shaped leaves is that they can blend the line between linear or a line shaped leaf or lance shaped leaf like you can see here. This leaf I would describe as, elli as elliptical or lance shaped, even linear. In the actual technical description of this plant, I've seen all three being used. I'm not going to get into the name of this plant because it's not important for this video. However, when we hold them side by side, we can see a lot more of a difference between this much more elliptical shaped leaf and this much more linear shaped leaf that you can see here. So linear is the next shape that we're going to talk about. And again, this blends the line more often than not with elliptical. Kind of like you can see here on this mountain mint. You can see how long and linear this leaf is, but it's also slightly elliptical in shape and the fact that it has very rounded bottom and a slightly rounded top. And the sizes of linear leaves can vary just as much as the shape behind them. Like you can see here in this narrow leaf plantain, you can see just how long this leaf is. And usually you're going to see these leaves described as linear because the margin runs in a straight line for the most part. If I put these two leaves side by side, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. If we look at the silhouette only of the leaf, we can see these very linear shapes. So these are two very good examples of linear leaves. Now another really common shape that you're going to be seeing on a lot of leaves and in a lot of field guides describing the leaves is lance shaped. Now here you can see this lance shaped leaf. Now lance shaped leaves get their name of their shape from Neolithic or Paleolithic spear points or lance points which you can see this shape here and I'll put a picture on the bottom right hand corner of a lance head so you guys can see the similarity in the shape. And now oftentimes with lance shaped leaves you might interpret them as being ovate. Now lance shape can kind of blend a line between ovate, obovate, and linear leaf structures in a lot of wild plants. And in field guides you may see different terms between one of those three used to describe the features of the plant that you're looking at. And here you can see 
a very long lance-shaped leaf, and this is the leaf of goldenrod, which oftentimes is considered lance-shaped. However, you might consider this linear. And here you can see another example of lance-shaped leaves. These are actually leaflets, but here on these lance-shaped leaflets, you can see that silhouette, that lance-shaped silhouette, and usually on lance-shaped leaves, this is going to be the silhouette that you're going to see. You know, if I take a, if I take the other lance-shaped leaf and lay it on top, just like that, you can see the similarity in the shape between these two leaves. Another leaf shape that's really common that you're going to be finding in the wild and mentioned in your field guides is called compound. Now, compound simply just means a leaf that has been sharply divided and cut multiple times. Compound can also blend the line between another shape that we're going to be talking out, talking out. Now, compound can also kind of mix with another shape and is also used to sometimes describe palmate shaped leaves because they are oftentimes compound and cut into multiple leaflets. But this here is a prime example of a compound leaf. Because if we look up close and personal, we can see all of these very fine, deep cuts and all these little bitty leaflets that divide these leaves, which is what makes them compound. And here you can see another fine example of a compound leaf. This one is very much more finely cut and very much more finely dissected, as you can see here. It's so fine that it almost disappears in front of the camera. The camera has a hard time focusing on it. But here you can see up close all of these little fine cuts that divide these leaves into these little bitty leaflets. Now the last common leaf shape that you're probably going to be finding is called palmate. And the reason that is is because the leaves or leaflets radiate radiate is because the leaves or leaflets radiate outwards in a palm-like structure. Now oftentimes palmate shaped leaves are used to describe compound leaves where they're divided to the point to where they sometimes look like leaflets. But this is a great example of a palmate shaped leaf. And another good example of this is in Virginia creeper. So this is the other, so this is another one of the main leaf shapes that you're going to be seeing within wild plants. Okay, and then after we've determined the shape of the leaves, the next thing that we want to do is we want to determine the physical characteristics of the side or the margin of the leaf. And this is usually called the margin of a leaf. Now there's three main things to look for on the side or the margin of any leaf. The first is called teeth or serrations. Usually these are called toothed edges. As you can see, these they basically just look like teeth. Like teeth on a saw blade, which is where they get their name. The side of the leaf could be smooth, like you can see here, and this is the term that you're going to see in your field guides or read in your field guides as smooth margined or smooth edged, just like you can see here in this leaf. And now another really common feature that you're going to be seeing on plants along the sides is called lobes. Now you can see these individual, these three individual lobes here on the leaf of this Canadian moonseed. Now there are a lot of other plants that have lobes. You can see this very distinct cleft at the back. There are a lot of other plants that have lobes, like maples, for example, or oaks. Here you can see another example of this leaf that has these lobes. You see the one, two, and the three individual lobes on this leaf. Okay, and then after you've determined the shape and the features of the sides of the leaves, the next thing that we need to determine is the growth of these leaves. Now there are two different growth forms, two different main growth forms to look for. One is single, and the next is leaflets. Here you can see the second form of leaflets. You can see all of these multiple leaflets that make up this one leaf. Now what separates a leaf from a leaflet is generally how much they're divided and that there is still some chlorophyll producing part of the leaf left in between each division or cut like you can see here. Another great example of leaflets can be found on the wild rose. Now the second common form is called single, and the reason it's called single is because like you can see here, there's just one leaf. There's not leaflets, there's no pairs of leaves, it's just one single leaf coming off of the stem. You can see each of these single leaves here on this stem off of this tree. And speaking of stems, there are a couple of different forms that leaves can grow in as well, and one of them is stem, just like you see here. Now stem is going to be very common and the most common form within trees. However, another good example is like you see here with the goldenrod, you can see this main stem here and all these leaves growing off of this main stem. Now this is going to be the largest majority of plants are going to grow in this form or going to grow in this stemmed form. Here you can see another example of stemmed growth on a plant. 
And then right here is another where you can see all of these leaves growing off of a main upright stem. Now another really common form that you're going to be seeing leaves growing in is what's known as a basal rosette, where essentially the leaves are growing on the ground and they're growing in a circle on the ground. And this here is a dandelion, so this is a really good example of a basal rosette. And then here if we go over to a narrow leaf plantain, you can see its basal rosette as well, which it doesn't really grow in so much of a rosette, but it still kind of does. It is basal and it does grow in somewhat of a circular pattern around the main taproot of the plant. And then if we get up close and personal with this broadleaf plantain, you can see another example of a basal rosette. So basal rosettes themselves can take on various shapes and various sizes between each plant. And some plants can actually have a main stem or stemmed growth along with the basal rosette. A good example of that is shepherd's purse. And another one of the common forms that you're going to see leaves growing in is what's known as a whorl, where the leaves are growing in a circular pattern around the main stem, like you see in Joe Pieweed. Now there are several plants that have this whorled growth pattern to the leaves, however those are kind of rare, and like I said, you're like Indian cucumber and Joe Pie weeds and things of that sort, iron, iron weeds and such, do have a whorled leaf growth pattern to them, but most plants do not grow this way. Another really common form of leaf growth that you're going to be seeing is called perfoliate. And the reason it's called that is because the leaves are usually perforated by the stem like you can see here in bone set. Now this feature isn't terribly common in my experience, however there are quite a few plants that do have this feature. It's just that you're probably not going to be looking for a lot of them and or there's really not a lot of them overall. However, like I said, there are a few plants like perfoliate bellwort and wild oats and things of that sort that actually do have this perfoliate leaf growth like you can see here where the leaf is perforated by the stem. Another really common form that you're going to be seeing in plants is known as clasping. And the reason it's called that is because the leaves, as you can see here, clasp the stem. They go around the stem. They're not perforated by the stem and there's no real petiole or leaf stem that the leaves attach to. They just kind of clasp around the main stem of the plant like you can see here. Alright, now that we've determined the shape and physical characteristics of the leaves, now we need to determine what order they're growing in. In this case, you can see these leaves are alternating, or what's known as alternate. And the reason it's called that is just because the leaves alternate one side to the other all the way up the stem. The other common form that you're going to be seeing is opposite. As you can see here, these two leaves growing on opposite sides of the stem. So that's something else to keep in mind when you're trying to identify a plant, is you want to determine the shape of the leaves, any physical features of the sides of the leaves, how the leaves are growing, whether they're in a stem form or a rosette form, and those kinds of things, and then you want to determine whether they're growing in an alternate or an opposite fashion. And then the next thing that we want to take a look at is we want to take a look at the petiole or the leaf stem, the stem that comes off of the leaf itself, because sometimes these will have defining characteristics such as colorations or hairs, maybe it's ribs or grooves. So the petiole, anytime you see the term petiole, it's describing the leaf stem or the stem off of the leaf. And we also want to pay attention to the leaf axle or where the leaf comes off of the main stem. Now this is an upside down view so you guys can see the corner or the axle and sometimes this will be called the node. This is also called the leaf node as well. And whenever I hold this plant like this you can see these flower clusters coming out of the leaf axles or at the leaf nodes on this specific plant. So knowing these terms whether it be smooth, opposite, ovate, lance-shaped, linear, node, axle, petiole, all these terms are very, very important to know. And here you can see another example of a compound leaf. You can see all these sharp divisions in this leaf and how it gets divided into leaflets. And the reason this is compound is because it has multiple cuts inside of this leaf, which actually on these, as you can see, make lobes as well. So that's something you might want to keep in mind, is that sometimes these plants can have multiples of each one of those features. Like in this plant, for example, you can see it is a compound leaf. We can see that the sides or margins of these leaves are double-toothed because you can see large teeth and then small teeth along the margins of the large teeth. And we can see that these incisions divide each one of these parts of the leaf into a couple different lobes. And then if I follow this plant to its base, 
to see the form of these leaves, we can see that these are growing in a basal pattern, but this wouldn't be a basal rosette because they're not growing in a circle or a rosary pattern. So I thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If you want to learn more about edible or medicinal plants, make sure to subscribe.